Hey, well, today we're going to start uh, seeing if we can uh, finish a nine-inch standing otter from a rough out to a finish. See how it goes. As always, start out by cutting the plug off top of his head. Right now I'm just doing a little bit of a inset where his eyes is. That ain't totally necessary. It's pretty close where it's at already. And then just a matter of just kind of drawing around and defining his hands and his arms there a little bit. Gonna be about it uh, with the saw. We're using the little battery saw here. Uh, they're nice uh, for doing these rough outs. Uh, they actually do a real good job. Ain't loud, you know, you can, uh, don't have to have your ear and protection on when you're using them. But uh, yeah, it's a, the better saw work real well for these rough outs. But right now I'm just still just defining, you know, going around the rounded edges and sharpening them up. As soon as we get that done, we're gonna break out some power tools on it. Here we're putting his mouth in. The otters here are about one of the most easy carvings that we have to finish. They're just so little you really have to do to them. Yeah, the you know the rough outs of the otters are pretty much like I say 90% done. Uh, you know that was all we had to do with the saw. A little grinding right there where his eyes and put put his nose in. This here is just a saber flame bit, I think as they call it, or a cone bit. You know, it worked good for putting the nostril holes in and insetting the inside corner of the eye. And I'm putting the little, you know, groove into his ears, so making his ears pop out a little bit. And as here, I'm putting in his toes, just walking around. We use a, a Wilton power arm vise. It's really good for uh, mounting the rough outs on because uh, you can tilt the carving at any angle uh, and stuff. So they work really well for these rough outs. Still doing a little manicure work here. Doing his uh, front feet here. Uh, Here I am showing you how, uh, you know, I do the ear. And here you see it's popping his eyes in. They finally wake up. That's when they come alive. Uh, got a little small pointy tool to go in and inset his eyes. It kind of knock the corners off in the corners of his eyes so it ain't just a round hole, kind of, you know, almond shape it just a little bit. And doing a little bit of nose trimming in, yeah. give it a little more definition. And then we're gonna take the grinder and clean the base up. We make our rough outs in like three different sizes, six, seven, eight, and nine, which that could be four different sizes. Uh, so this is the bigger ones that we make. They, this otter is nine inches in diameter and probably 30 inches tall. Well, that's just about as big as we can make is nine inches. Uh, bigger, bigger the roundness is of the base, the taller they are. The otter is one of our earlier rough outs. You know, we just kind of knocking some of the fuzz off of them here. You know, some of the big stuff. Uh, I don't like to thin him too much with the uh, angle grinder because there's some texture in him already. Yeah, uh, you know, brushing them really depends on how, you know, how fuzzy they are. Some are uh, a lot fuzzier than others. You know, this otter here ain't very, very fuzzy, so he'll clean up pretty quick. The stuff that has uh, a lot of fuzz, I usually knock it off quick with the uh, a saber bit 
like a flame or something with a real fine grit seemed to be the best way to knock off the, uh, the fur. The reason some are more fuzzy than others mainly is, uh, you know, at a certain time your bits start getting a little dull. It makes them, you know, they fur up a little more and then just the direction of the grain when it carves, uh, you know, inside different angles of the corners, it'll fur it up you know, just from the texture of the wood. You know, I like otters burnt real hard because they're a real dark animal and they flick. So fire's another great sanding tool. So we're gonna give them a good cook job and it won't take long, it'll be done. This is a quick paint job here, you know. This is, you know, fire is a paint job and a sand job all in one. Well, the way I finish the otter, which uh, all otters are pretty much dark all over except for the tip of his muzzle and a little bit on his chest, it's kind of a tan color. So I burn everything but his muzzle and a little bit of it leave his ch chest a little light. As soon as we get through burning it, uh, you know, real hard, we'll, we'll get a, a soft bristle brush or, you know, kind of like a you know, nylon brush and sand all the soot off. It gives it a soft look, so any tiny cracks that you have in the wood, it pushes that sawdust in there and it covers them cracks up. We got the flap sander back out and uh, we're just gonna try to highlight some of the light areas back on the chair and uh, we'll hit his muzzle a little bit from where we got a little bit of that soot on it and just, just trying to clean that part up. That's it. See if we can't get him death mounted there. And uh, we've got a couple wood screws in the bottom. Unscrew him. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Uh, our main things, I got some dyes here that I call, made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. Uh, I use basically water for the 90% of it. Uh, mix, you know, the dye with water. It's real easy to keep cleaning my airbrush and stuff. But what I probably use even more than the colors is uh, men wax stain. I like gold note. It's probably my favorite light color. And then I use conventional and black walnut for my dark colors. Men wax make hundreds of different colors. I basically use two. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush uh, stuff, or you can get them on eBay. And uh, that's about what we use for uh, coloring our carvings. Hope this helped. Take the otter. Uh, normally, I just leave them hard burnt, but sometimes I like to take my dark walnut stain and kind of go over the hard burn. It helps blend the light and the dark together. So. Uh, using a little walnut to hit some of the light spots and transitions between the, the burn and the white. Uh, and any light spots on the back, I kind of hit and blend the nose in real quick. A little bit of golden note, spray the muzzle in his neck to just kind of tone it down. But that's all, you know, up to you whether you like that color or even lighter. I kind of go both ways. But uh, that's our honor for the day and uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one.